Do you want to know how to make a Galactus helmet that's super realistic and looks amazing? Well, let me show you how. Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Luke and in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make this super realistic, awesome looking Galactus helmet. I'm going to be taking you through getting the files, doing this incredible paint job, a little bit of the weathering, and then adding some LEDs right at the end so that you get a result that looks like this. This thing is an incredibly fun helmet to do, a little bit complex, but I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it. So the first thing we need to go and do is find some files. Now for the files, we've got this channel sponsor, DO3D. So as you can see from these files, this is our Galactus helmet. I mean, this helmet is pretty exciting. I'm, I'm interested to see how well I can paint this thing. We're gonna be doing a whole gloss black, a Luma Luster, and some DNA candy paints. Hopefully you can achieve that dark purple sort of look uh, that the Galactus helmet has. Uh, I don't want to go as much into the comics with that like lighter purpley pink. I want to do something closer to the film. Now, as you can see, you've got the back, you've got the front, you've got the two side horn pieces, and then this top cap. Uh, since printing this, Dio has actually gone and changed the files. They've added in this little face plate, meaning that you don't have to use your own face if this was for like a big statue, you, uh, which is in my case. Uh, You've got that face for this. I've just left it off. I'm not really interested in reprinting everything. I've already printed it and sanded it, so yeah. But if you want to print the face, if not, just totally leave it off. But they've also gone through and edited this top piece. For me, uh, this big blue bit and this top piece were joined into one. So I did use a lot, a lot, and a lot of supports holding up that middle center. But since then, they've gone and removed it and made it magnetized, which makes printing faster and cheaper for you. They've also gone through and added this little piece, which you can magnetize at the top to make it a popcorn bucket. Because Do3D, you seem to be obsessed with popcorn buckets. So also with these files, they are very, very detailed. As you can see, they've got all these sorts of like in the printed details and that sort of stuff, which you've really got to be careful when printing this. I printed it on my higher setting on my printers, which yes, they took a little bit longer, but at least I captured that detail. I've also been a little bit cautious on the sanding. So usually I'll hit the whole thing with a 180, uh, like an 80, and then knock all the layer lines down and sort of do that thing. But I've also noticed that the more I did that, the more detail I was losing. So I've gone over with a light sand of 80 and then a round of 180, trying to use more of the filler primer than doing some sanding. It's not ideal in this sort of scheme trying to print something this big with all the layer lines and that, but you want to capture as much detail as physically possible. And seeing that I will be using a 2K gloss black, uh, that is a really dense paint that I'll be using, meaning it should be able to fill out most of those layer lines and disguise them. And then once we paint it in this sort of dark purpley candy, it should, fingers crossed, hide some of the layer lines if we have any left over. But other than that, just print it, see how it goes, and then we'll talk about the paint in a minute. So massive thank you again to Do3D for supporting this channel and supporting everything that I do, supplying all my files, giving me tips, tricks, and being an incredible team to work alongside. If you are interested in buying these Galactus files, Ant Iron Man, Ant-Man, Star Wars, this, that, and the other, don't forget to use code CRE8 at checkout and you get 20% off your builds to start on your journey of endlessly making too many things, which is what I do. All right, so let's go through how we actually paint something like this. So after the primer is down, the next thing we have to go and do is our gloss black. This is a Lassa 2K gloss black. It is designed to like put chromes over, uh, although the chrome that is used for this, I just replace with the Luma Luster, but it works perfectly. The benefits with using this thing is that it goes down really high gloss, meaning you get to skip the clear coating stage and it looks and goes down super easily. Once it goes blacks down, you wanna give it around 48 hours to dry and then we hit it with my favorite step, a Luma Luster. Luma Luster, if you haven't already noticed by now, is my favorite thing under the sun and it is the perfect chrome on how we get this incredibly shiny finish. Now, to spray the chrome, I just go through with a 0.8 mil nozzle in my HVLP gun. That is the best way to get the nicest shine out of this by also just doing a pass and then a little bit quick dry. I won't go too much into spraying that, uh, explaining and how to spray a Luma Luster. There are quite a few other videos out there, but just know for the chrome that went down, it's a Luma Luster. The step after this is, well, a little bit exciting. These are DNA candy paints. Now, these are a company called DNA uh, here in Australia. 
they also run Trident paints for like airbrushes and that sort of stuff. But these are the DNA paints. These are a chrome sort of based paint that is designed to be, well, I guess painting cars or being sprayed over high gloss chrome. This is Mulberry. Uh, they have about 20, 30 different colors in this range. I do not know if you can get this stuff in the US or overseas. I'm based in Australia where this stuff is made, so it's a bit of a bonus for me. Uh, but any sort of like candied paints that are designed for cars is what I've used. And that's probably what you'll be able to find if you can't get this stuff in your country. I just went through with a one mil nozzle in my HVLP gun and sprayed this. You want to build this coating up. Do not spray one big heavy coat or it'll discolor and go horrible. You wanna be doing around four to six coats. On that first coat, you are just doing very light, simple sprays. You don't wanna be going too heavy and you just basically won't even see the color up until around layer three. Layer three, you can sort of start applying more and more of the paint. Around layer four, a little bit more. And by the time you've hit around layer six or five or six, the paint should start to actually, well, look like this. Although I said do really light coats, around the fifth or sixth coat, you can go a fraction more heavy. That's how I also managed to make this paint just a fraction darker than it usually should be, is by just painting a little bit more on. But do not go heavy, or otherwise you'll get these weird little bubbly bits. It won't look very nice, and when it tries to dry, it probably won't dry properly, and it looks all wacko and stuff. So it's better to do lighter coats, and around that fifth coat, do a fraction more heavy. Don't go anything more than that. Once that's done, we're just going to hit it with an MS22 2K clear. This is a 2K automotive clear coat. You've seen me use this stuff before. Uh, it is just a big clear coat that is designed to go on cars. Yet I'm an idiot and use them on props like this. But this is what's gonna give us our super, 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 super shiny finish. And the other thing it's gonna use is for our weathering later on. Now, you might also be asking yourself, well, how did you spray, well, any of this stuff? And that's where this channel sponsor, Anesto Water, comes in. I shot every single bit of these paints through the LPH 80, just changing out the nozzle for the Illumiluster, which is a 0.8 mil, and the rest of these paints being shot through a one mil needle. The LPH 80 is the most perfect gun that you can use to start painting props and stuff like this if you wanted to get into the more high-end stuff over some rattle cans. The LPH 80 is designed as a touch-up gun, meaning when you're painting cars or larger projects, Instead of using like a larger gun to paint a small area, you use one of these, but we can utilize its baby series as they like to call it, and well, spray a Luma Luster and some really fun candy paints. Everything you see here was shot around 20 to 25 PSI, just depending on what I felt like or how things manipulate. Most of the time, everything is at 20 PSI. This gun is also incredible in its way of the trigger forming, and it just runs rings around, well, some of these basic guns that you can buy on the market. Now, yes, this gun can get a little bit pricey at the start, but if you take care of this, you can buy hundreds of replacement parts for this, and this thing will probably outlive me, based on how many 2K paints I've sniffed. But huge thank you to Ernesto Water for supporting this channel and supporting me this year. It is an honor to have used this gun and continue to use this on every other project that I have coming up. So massive thank you to them. I'll also be explaining this gun in a little bit more detail and its own video in the next coming months uh, so that you guys know exactly what this gun is capable of. So enough of the yapping in this incredibly long painting segment. On to the weathering, which should only, doesn't take very long. And then that's pretty much it. All right, so on to weathering this helmet. Now this is an incredibly easy weathering job. Uh, there's really not much to it, but we're just utilizing some oil paints and some naphtha as per usual. Now, usually uh, when I do my projects, I'll go through with some black and some burnt umber. A combo of those two I really like. It makes sort of, it looks really dirty and weathered. But in this case, because of the purple, I wanted to try and make a little bit of a like purple tone that's also looked weathered. And for those two colors, I just used some red and some dark like hazel purple blue. I found a combo of these two plus the brown and the black all together gave the perfect weathering for this thing. You just want to apply it in some nice light coats around the entire helmet, along with some naphtha just to sort of smooth things out. I won't go into too much detail as per usual with this weathering technique, just because I learned it from a course by Henry Creations. And if you are interested in that, I will leave the course down in the description. It's his metal weathering course, but it goes through pretty much the entire of weathering thing. And I've kind of taken bits and pieces of that, smushed it into one, and then made helmets and stuff with the weathering. 
The great thing also with throwing that 2K paint is that it locks in really, really nicely with the oil paints and those two are best friends, which is really nice to know. And that's pretty much it for the weathering, not much else. And then the last thing is also for the LEDs. These are just cosplay LED eyes. There is nothing fancy about them. And then all the cable management is just shoved up into the top of the helmet, nothing really fancy at all. But that's how I got the eyes to look really, really well. So pretty much that is all for the helmet. Uh, so let's head to the end bit. Yeah. And that is the helmet complete. I am super happy with how this one came out. This purple shine is incredible. I'm really happy to use that DNA Mulberry paint. Works incredibly over the Illuma Luster. And adding that little bit of weathering right at the end also just tones that shine down a bit from the 2K clear. And then also just makes things, I don't know, feel a bit more uniform. And it also looks super, super spot on to the actual film, which I have not seen yet. So now this is done, I'll go and watch that. But really, really happy with how this one turned out. So a huge thank you again to DO3D for supporting this channel and making this helmet possible. And then other than that, I will see you all next week where we've got our final Fantastic Four sort of helmet in our series which is going to be a Doctor Doom helmet, which I have in fact just sprayed the Imperial Surface as a Luma Luster down. So we're just doing a little bit more weathering and then that video will be out next week. So until then, thank you so much all for watching and let's head to the final result. <laughs>